There's a spot. Perfect. Thank you, Lord. Provided. Hey, God bless you guys. Barista, what's going on? God bless you. Hey, how's it going, man? I want the normal, my usual. Yeah, actually, we have a couple girls in line already. If I could just get you to move to the back, and I'll help you as soon as I'm done with that. I'm sorry about that. Last week first, first to be last. Dude, do you go to church at all? Do you go to church at all? So do you go to church at all? Hey, is this seat open? Hey, is this seat available? Uh, dude, I just wanted to knock out some devos real quick. I spent some time with Jesus. I woke up kind of late this morning. Yeah, come on, let's go over. Let's go over. Let me sit down. I just want to share something from God's word. He hit me up in my devos this morning. I was like, I got to share this. Genesis 1, 1. Thirsty, huh? Getting some water? Yeah. Yeah, I know the living water. I was noticing that you're drawing some stuff over here. Back before when I wasn't a Christian, I, I was making so much money as a graphic designer. You been born again? You been born again? Born again, and you need to quit walking in the flesh. I mean, obviously you don't really know God, your tattoos, and you know, in your ear and stuff. If you don't start out the day by just bathing yourself in prayer, the day doesn't even go that well. You're not realizing that there is a God. He sent Jesus to die for you. Why don't you see that? And in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, I just would go to these crazy parties. It was crazy. Well, I mean, just cash like crazy. But uh, but I've left all that behind. Now I'm a Christian. You can't live life without God. He's not real. He's here. I can't yes, see him. Yes, I'm just not getting through to you. God I can't is real. Touch him. Yeah, you can't touch Africa, but Africa exists. I just have to say, I'm blessed. Too blessed to be stressed by the devil's mess. What's holding you back from committing your life to Jesus Christ? I it's probably the sin in your life is what's going on. <laughs> scared? Hell is scary. Why don't you look at that girl right there? Look at her. She's gonna die. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. She's gonna die. If you're gonna die, where do you think you would go? Man, that sounded hot. I wonder how hot hell is. Hopefully you don't go there. Oh, this is good. The New Testament is so just applicable. Have you guys noticed this? Hey, you gotta be washed by the blood of the lamb. I mean, so that you are justified, sanctified, future glorified. I mean, this is amazing. You gotta come out. Do you drive a Volkswagen? Yeah, yeah, I do. But regardless, man, you gotta come to church. Hey, remember what I said? Hell, scary. Good morning and welcome to Rayleigh Baptist Church on Sunday, the 27th of December. I don't know if you have any turkey left over. Is there Christmas pudding in your fridge? Or can I still get away with wearing this shirt? Before we start today's service, a couple of announcements. The first one is on Tuesday, the 5th of January, we're having a church members meeting. Details will be emailed out through the usual channels. And the main point of discussion is going to be about the refurbishment of the base and where we are and the decisions we have to make about whether we feel it right to continue and carry on with a step of faith to make and create a space that will enable us to reach out to the community for the next 100 years. And speaking of 100 years, or not quite, I'm very happy to announce the birthday of Beryl Holt, who is <coughs> years old on the 30th of January. We wish you a very happy birthday, Beryl, and the best of health as we celebrate your birthday and bringing in the new year a few days later. We're going to start by singing a couple of songs and then go think about the video which we watched just before the service started.
That video we just watched unfortunately sets the scene for a lot of us when we think of the word evangelism and when we're encouraged to share our faith, that idea of just getting up in, in a pub or a coffee shop and just blurting out things about Jesus makes us either shiver with fear or just make us think, what's the point? Unfortunately, Sharing our faith is not something we can get away from. It's almost expected from us, and it's part of the deal of being part of God's kingdom. But thankfully, it's not about standing up in the middle of a restaurant and shouting out, Jesus. There's more to it than that. And hopefully today, we'll enable you to understand, and as we explore together, what it means to share our faith in the 21st century, you're a bit more encouraged, enthused, and more open to maybe trying out a few things to help reach our friends and neighbours. One of the ways as a church we want to help you share your faith is by running an Alpha. And we're going to be talking today about what Alpha is, what it means, and how you can be involved. Well, I say how, because we would like everyone watching and everyone who's part of this church to be involved in Alpha and we'll explain during this service how you can do that. But why are we chosen to run Alpha and what does it mean for a church to be involved in running such a course? We're going to watch a short video now which just sort of introduces the idea that people around the world are asking questions about God and the thing is, who is it that they're finding their answers from? Um, I go on Google. Google. I definitely Google. I go on Wikipedia. Internet. I uh, scroll through all the different answers and then I try and combine it and then make my own kind of point. Or my friends. I don't ask big life questions. It's too hard to answer. Google or my grandmother. I meditate or I read. When I have a big life questions, I probably go to my family. I haven't really had any mess with what this. To my mom or my dad, basically. My mom or my dad, maybe my grand. I get most of my answers from the library in any section there because I don't really trust the people that I'm around. The key is always to yourself. You got to figure some things out for yourself. If I'm confused, I go to him first and he confuses me more. But when it's something more personal, I try to find it within myself. I don't know if that video surprises you that Google was mentioned a lot as a source of information. I wonder what Google says if you've searched Rayleigh Baptist Church. Maybe that's something you can do after the service and see if it says anything at all about our church here. But one of the reasons we want to run Alpha is to help you in your personal outreach. As I said earlier, it's an expectation that all Christians at some point will have the opportunity to share their faith. Now, I'm not talking about you going out to the street corner with your Bible, knocking on all your neighbour's doors. Although if that's something you want to do, go for it. I think it's brilliant. You know, people need to hear the word of God. But for some of us, 
We just all clam up and get really scared about this idea of sharing our faith. It's really sad um, that people think that sharing our faith is some big deal. And I think churches, and maybe church leaders in the past, have made it into something that is such a big deal, we're just frightened because we don't think we're good enough, we don't think we have all the answers, and we don't think we have all the talk that needs to happen, the gift of the gab, as it's said. The thing is, everyone is on a journey. You're on a journey, I'm on a journey. And thankfully for most of us who are watching this, our journey involves Jesus, God, church. But for a lot of people, it doesn't. And this journey has different stages to it. And I think what's happened is we all get this idea in our head that when we evangelise, when we talk to people about God, our expectations are that they will commit to God there and then, make a decision, follow Jesus. And if they don't, then we ourselves are failures. The thing is, this journey has many stages. Have a think back to when you first became a Christian or became aware of church or started going to church from your own choice, not because you're taken by your parents. Did you always believe in God? Did you always have the faith you have now? I'm hoping you have said no, because it's not true. As our faith builds, our confidence builds, and our relationship with Jesus changes, and this journey has a point of starting. And that starting point is just finding out about who God is, who Jesus is. It's not about making a commitment. It's not about becoming a Christian. And if we get into our heads that we ourselves can help with those steps, and it's not about conversion. It's not about bringing people into church. It's about being available to be part of their journey. That might be listening to where they are. It might be just sitting with them as they tell you their story. It might be giving the odd advice about gardening, cooking, knitting, whatever it is. It's just becoming more involved with their journey. And as you get more involved with their journey, you start opening up about your journey. Later on, we're going to watch a video clip about one man's journey into Alpha and how it all started because someone was honest about going to church. That's all they said to him, I go to church. And then the conversation went off. And we'll talk about it later. But first, I want us to watch a video clip which helps us understand more about why we have chosen Alpha to help with our sharing our faith. Hi, I'm Toby. And I'm Gemma. And we're the hosts of the Alpha Film Series. And today we're here for Alpha Training to help you run the best Alpha you can for all the people who are going to be coming along. And in this training, we're going to look at how Alpha works behind the scenes, focusing specifically on the Alpha small group. The second training is all about how to pray for people on the Alpha weekend. But before we jump into that, you might be thinking, what is Alpha? Well, Alpha is a series of interactive sessions that explore the basics of the Christian faith. It's about the big questions of life, like, what am I here for? What's the purpose of my life? And most people ask this kind of questions at some point in their lives. Alpha is for anyone, but it's specifically designed for people who would not describe themselves as Christians or regular churchgoers. And Alpha is running in churches and homes, schools, skate parks, from boardrooms to some of the toughest prisons in the world. It runs in 169 countries, and so far over 29 million people have done it. So it's day one of filming. Action. Take two I'm Nicky Gumbel and I'm the vicar of HTB and I've been involved in the sort of pioneering of Alpha over the years. And I'm Pepper Gumbel, married to Nicky and I've been involved with Alpha for many years too. Uh, Alpha started in 1977 back in a, a, a 
flat round here. And at the time it was much more a course for new believers and you weren't particularly interested in that. You wanted to do things for people outside the church. I was asked to take on Alpha by Sandy, who was the vicar here, uh, in October 1990. So rather reluctantly, I took it on. But then in January of 1991, I had a group made up entirely of people who were outside of the church. And I began to realize this course could be used for people outside the church. And so we started to develop it as a course for people, as we, we would call it, wanting to explore the meaning of life. We were seeing people coming who had no faith um, and taking this journey to a place of real Christian faith. So it was the most exciting thing to see these people come along. And then it began to really grow. Having been, this is our 76th small group in a row, all I know is that people's lives will be changed and uh, there will be a transformation in the, in the whole dynamic of the small group in the next 10 weeks. Everything to do with Alpha is basically word of mouth. Mm. I mean, why do people come in our small group? It was all word of mouth yeah. when you yeah. went round. Yeah. And the advertising might help because they say, oh, I know about that course because I've seen, but it's because my friend yeah. um, at work or yeah. my, as somebody came in our small group last, last night, he said, he hadn't, so this was week two last night. Um, so his friend had come the first week mm. and he dragged along his cousin. Mm. So he was, um, only come because his cousin came the first week and then he asked his cousin along. It's friends bringing friends. Every one of us can say the words, I went to church. Or at the moment, I watched church service on the internet. When you are asked on Monday, what did you do over the weekend? I watched a church service. I went to church. Now we're not talking and trying to get people to come to church. We're talking about people finding faith in God and becoming part of God's kingdom. That's more important than bums on seats on a Sunday. But the thing is, that is a conversation starter that we can all do. And that's all it takes sometimes, that little nugget. And it just opens up so many doors. Being honest about our faith is the first step of being able to share it. Because once our friends, our colleagues, our neighbours understand and know that we're Christians and we have faith, then it enables us to have conversations that involve Jesus. I'm able to have conversations with our neighbours. We don't have debates about religious theology on New Testament and Old Testament. I have a conversation that the fact is, oh, I've got to go to church to record service and it takes longer and is harder than just turning up on a Sunday. And that's all that takes. That's not going to win that person over to Christ, but I'm sharing my faith because I'm making my journey seem normal. I'm normalizing what it is, not that it makes Jesus normal, not that it makes faith normal, but the fact is that it's natural for me to have faith. And that gets people thinking. And the more natural we can be, the more it enables our faith to come into the conversation. And Jesus and the Bible and church don't become some strange thing which other people do. It becomes a reality. Just little things that we can all do. We've got to sing a song now. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now no longer I, but Christ in me.
I've made it sound so simple, haven't I? Sharing our faith is all about opening up to our friends and neighbours, being honest and real. The fact that we are Christians, we go to church and we have faith. What does the Bible say about it? What does Jesus show us about sharing our faith? Well, Paul is going to come now and share God's word and just unpack a little bit more biblically about why and how we should share our faith. Thank you, Stuart. Good morning, family. It's, uh, it's good to be with you again this morning. And uh, I've been asked by Stuart if I would share a little bit about us as a fellowship, sharing our faith, sharing our life stories about what God is doing uh, and what he has done and how we go about doing that as we live our daily lives. I don't know about you, but it's been a really unusual year. Uh, whenever I've seen the news, they've talked about it being an unprecedented times. It's been an unprecedented year. Um, the government have used that phrase again and again and again. And it kind of got me to think about what really is unprecedented. And, uh, you know, 2000 years ago, the most unprecedented event took place in that. Our God, who had created us, who had made us, came as a baby and was born in a manger. And we celebrated that just this Christmas day on Friday. Now, I don't know about you, but that's an amazing event. God who created us came as a baby, as a, as a, as a small child that needed his created beings to look after him, to nurture him and bring him to adulthood and that same man that man Jesus he lived a life that was just full of reverence and awe of his father in heaven and he showed us the way that we could live and it led him to the cross to that point where he died for each and every one of us we talk about unprecedented that was unprecedented the God that created us died in our place that we might know freedom that we might know God for ourselves and in doing so that we would have stories of faith that we could share with a world that's looking and looking and looking for their creator well unprecedented times we are living in unprecedented times the bible tells us 
that there will be famine, there will be illness, there will be devastation in the world, uh, and, and not to be alarmed. Jesus warned us, do not be alarmed, it will happen. None of this is a surprise to God. God knew that COVID-19 was coming. It wasn't a surprise to him. He is sovereign and he is in control. Yet, he still loves. He loves each and every one of us. And he, he made a promise to Noah that he would never wipe out mankind from earth again. He did that once and he's not going to do it again. So, how do we share what's happened in our lives what is it that God wants us to do look let me share a few uh, examples from the Bible on how Jesus approached sharing his who he was and and the effect that that had on the people that he talked to and then out of that let's unpack a little bit about what it means for you and me 2,000 years later well I don't know about you but John 4 is one of my favorite go-to stories in in the bible about what jesus did if you don't know that story look it up afterwards in full but in john chapter 4 jesus gets his disciples to leave him and he goes and he has a conversation with a woman at a well now you might think well, what's unusual about that but in the context of the time that jesus was here there was a few issues with that one men were never alone with women two that woman was a Samaritan and Jews never ever um, did life with Samaritans. In fact, they, they looked down on the Samaritans. They were people that were not to be trusted and were not um, they were not their equals in their own in their own eyes. So a woman and a Samaritan. And thirdly, she was possibly a woman of ill repute because she was out at that well in midday we don't know if that's true but possibly and therefore he was talking to this woman at, on his own and why was he doing that well if you read the story he has a conversation with her and through that conversation of asking her questions and revealing answers he unravels and demonstrates to her that he is the messiah and she knows it she knows it so much that she just gets up from that place and she goes into town and she gets her villagers to come out to see Jesus look here is the Messiah the one who knew all about my life has come and he's here she was excited about being set free by God she was excited she knew that Jesus was the Christ the Messiah and she was excited about being set free and so she wanted to share her story of faith nothing could hold her back there's also an account where Jesus healed a blind man and and, and, and the blind man was just so excited that he went around telling everyone despite being told not to he just couldn't hold himself back Jesus had done something for him that just filled his heart with joy and worship of God that he needed to go and tell everyone now we've all had things in our lives where we can say God has done something for me and he's set me free from something or or, or he's healed me of something or he, he's done this for me he's provided that for me when it seemed that things weren't going to go right he came in and he provided peace and he provided the way and we can share those stories with people and it will resonate our stories our testimony of what Jesus has done in our lives cannot be taken away from us and they're just so uh, illuminating of who our God is that he wants to be involved not just in our lives but in the lives of those in our community and it will set people's hearts to racing to want to know more that story of the woman at the well the story of that blind man just examples of Jesus setting free another one that is great and, and one that I think of is not about Jesus it's about Philip the evangelist he, he he's on a he's on a gospel mission he's going around he's on a tour and he's preaching and people are coming to Christ and then the Holy Spirit says to him go into the desert what I'm on my tour I'm reaching people I'm bringing fruit into the kingdom and and yet you're telling me now to go into the desert there's no one there but actually go, he, he's obedient he doesn't ask those questions he's obedient and he goes into the desert and we read in that account in Acts that 
he meets an Ethiopian eunuch who is reading Isaiah, the scripture Isaiah. Philip has the chance just to say, I know who that is. It's talking about Jesus. And Jesus came and, and, and he gave his life on the cross and he died. And, and, the, and the Ethiopian eunuch said, well, what must I do? And he just said, well, repent and be baptized. And, and he said, well, there's loads of water here. Let's do it now. And that Ethiopian eunuch was probably the mission starter of the church in Ethiopia. He went back full of joy to his own people, having been released from his sin and knowing that he was accepted by the Creator God. He went back to Ethiopia and shared his story. And the church in Ethiopia shaped the Orthodox Church and, and the Orthodox teachings that we still hold quite firmly even today in our church. Well, did everybody that Jesus talked to come to faith? Well, we don't know. Well, I would say they didn't, um, potentially. There's an account in Luke 18 where he, he talks to a rich young ruler. And this rich young ruler leads a good life. He obeys the laws. He does what the law asks him to on the surface. But Jesus knew that there was something that held him back. And that one thing for that young man was he was quite rich. And his wealth meant more to him than worshipping God. Because when Jesus said, you have one thing that you need to do, get rid of your possessions, and then you'll be in a position to worship me. Now, God doesn't always ask rich people to get rid of their possessions. But for that young man, it was a stumbling block. And we read that in Luke 18, that he went away unhappy. And Jesus then said to his followers, it's easier for a rich, uh, for a camel to go through an eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But in verse 27, he says, but what is impossible with man is possible with God. And then it's amazing that the next thing that we read is that Jesus meets Zacchaeus, the tax collector, somebody who's become rich because of his position. He collected taxes. He was paid by the Romans. Despite the fact he was a Jew, he was despised by his fellow Jews because not only did he collect taxes on behalf of, of the Romans, but he would have kept some of that for himself. He would have collected extra. And in his conversations with Jesus, he is cut to the heart. He's a rich man, but he's cut to the heart and he realises that the wealth isn't worth it. And he puts things right and he says, if I've, if I've diddled anyone, I'll give them back what I've taken and more. And, and Jesus is just full of joy because he says, salvation has come to this house. Salvation has come to this house. Jesus brought salvation to this rich man. What is impossible with man is possible with God. You see, it's not about me. It's about God. And that's what I want to say to you. I want you in 2021 not to think that it's you that's going to bring people into the kingdom of God. Because it isn't. It's God that brings people into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> but what he wants is faithful servants that will go out into the world and to be disciples, making disciples, to share God's love. Let me read you these words from Matthew's Gospel. It's at the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth, um, just as he's about to ascend to the Father. In Matthew 28 and verses 19 and 20, he says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you, to the very end of the age. Jesus came and he showed us. It's about loving people. It's about approaching people where they are. It's about accepting people where they are. It's about demonstrating kingdom love. Micah the prophet um, 
shared this hundreds of years before Jesus was born. In, in Micah 6, 8, he says, He has showed you, O man, what is good. Jesus has showed us what is good. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are good. And they have come and they have showed us that they love us. And what does the Lord require of you? He requires us to act justly. Where we see injustice, we are to step in for the person who hasn't got a voice. We are to step in and to be their voice. He's asked us to act justly. He's asked us to love mercy, to be a merciful people, to be a forgiving people, to be a place of grace and love in the same way that Jesus was merciful that he went to the cross for each one of us. We're to live that same type of life, to lay down our lives for others and to walk humbly with God. It's all about knowing the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's not an accident that we looked at the, 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 the topic of who is the Holy Spirit and what he does for us, the gifts he gives us, the way he matures us, he teaches us, he changes us, he transforms us to be more like Jesus. And then we looked at the story of Peter. How did that work out in that one man? He made mistakes, but he was still sold out for Jesus. He was still one who wanted to go and share the love of God. That same Peter, near the end of his life, when he, when he wrote to the church, wrote these words in 1 Peter 3. Be prepared and ready to share, when questioned, why you have the hope you have are you ready to share that answer with people and i just want to leave you with this one thing jesus often didn't answer questions he often just asked open questions and left people to ponder and to think jesus often didn't answer questions he asked open questions and left the individuals to ponder and to think. When you're in your conversations with people, with your friends, your neighbours, your work colleagues, your, your fellow students at college or school, wherever you might be, anybody that you meet, when you're in conversation with them, the most important thing is not to jump in, not to answer their questions, but to ask them questions and to be attentive and to listen. And as you listen, ask God, is there something I should say? Listen to the Holy Spirit's prompting and allow him to say, now's the time for you to share your faith, to share what God is doing in your life. And when you hear that, when it resonates in your spirit, share and bring someone. You know, each one of us, has a story of what God's done in our lives. And who knows, your story may fit with where somebody is today. I wanna to ask you, what are you gonna do in 2021? I wanna put a challenge out there, one challenge. Each and every day, just ask God each and every day when you're spending time with him, who is it, Lord, that you want me to engage with today for your kingdom who is it that you want me to share with today and that sharing might just be listening who is it that you want to put in my path and allow God to make those divine appointments for you so that you can make a difference in 2021 let me finish by praying for each one of us father I want to thank you that it is you who calls us and convicts us through your Holy Spirit as you send your spirit ahead of us. Jesus, you said you are with us to the very end of the age and you promised that you would be with us through your spirit and you are with us and you come with us on each and every living moment of each and every day. We are never apart from you in the good, in the bad, in the difficult and in the easy. Lord, you are in the midst. And so I pray, I pray for each one of us that you would give us opportunities, God opportunities this year, just to share our faith and to allow your Holy Spirit space to speak words of conviction, words of challenge, 
and words of transformation to those that you've sent into our path so that we can love them into the kingdom for you. We ask this not so that our church grows, but so that you, Lord, will be glorified here on earth. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Paul. And we'll be coming back to that challenge about praying for someone in a moment. We're going to watch a short video clip now about someone who I said earlier had just had a simple conversation with someone about going to church. And out of that discussion, as we've seen in the video, they were invited to attend an Alpha. And we'll see in his story what happens. My name's Hugo Monnier, um, I'm 30 years old, um, I'm a former rugby player, um, I used to play for a team called Harlequins in London, um, played for England and the British and Irish Lions, I'm now a commentator slash pundit, so I've gone from playing rugby to talking about it, which is great. Uh, rugby's such a physical game, on a Saturday you, you get beaten up, you really do, Sunday you're feeling like your body's in pieces, and Monday's part of the recovery process. And we had this new masseuse come in, her name was Rachel, and uh, I was asking her what she'd been up to at the weekend, and she'd said um, she said she'd been at church, and I was like, oh wow, well that's really cool, it's really cool, nice, and uh, we progressed the conversation, asked her what she was up to in the week, and she said uh, she's going on an Alpha course, had I heard of it, and I was like, well I'd seen the signage, seen it on the buses, I seen it in and around London, but didn't really know too much about it, but I started talking about it, and. Um, she said, well, you should try it out, like, you should try it out. Um, in fact, there's a call starting next week at Holy Trinity Brompton, led by Nicky Gumbel. So we went, um, I was nervous, didn't know what to expect, I really didn't. Um, I literally thought it'd be like 10 people in a room, candle, um, glass of water, and people just kind of unloading all their troubles, and me walking away more depressed than what I came with. Couldn't be any further from the truth. Um, turned up and people queuing outside HTB, 1,500 people rock up. There was music, there was light, there was life. It was unbelievable. And for me, um, as a rugby player, there was free food. I was sad. My experience at church beforehand had been, you go to church, you get spoken at, you nod your head, you go home. But it was amazing to be engaged in conversation. Someone gave a talk, on the various different topics which you speak about, I got to listen, digest it, and then actually speak to other people uh, within the small groups about what it was. There was loads of different people from different backgrounds. I remember the first ever chat we had, there was someone who completely rubbish the talk. So it was like, what did you think of it? And he was like, I can't say exactly what he said, but he was pretty aggressive and he was pretty adamant that what we were saying were complete lies. And I was like, wow, like, for a start, I've never heard anyone speak up in church like that. And secondly, well, if he can say that, it means we can say anything we want, which is great. And it wasn't like anyone was offended. And the one word it kept coming back to was respect, 100%. One of my heroes growing up was a man called Billy Graham. He's arguably one of the best communicators of the good news about Jesus of the 20th century, an amazing speaker. He had this great testimony about his own journey of coming to faith and great hair, and I wanted to be like him. I used to dream of speaking to thousands about Jesus. The only problem was that I was a shy, introverted teenager with, as I saw it, a very ordinary testimony and below average hair. And I tried sometimes to tell my friends at school and university about Jesus. I even once tried some street evangelism, but none of it really seemed to work very well. And then I read a passage at the beginning of John's Gospel where Andrew encounters Jesus and then invites his brother, Simon Peter, to come and meet Jesus too. Peter then became one of the greatest evangelists of the early church. He spoke to thousands of people on the day of Pentecost. And even Billy Graham, it turned out, was invited to hear about Jesus by a guy called Albert McMakin. So I thought, well, I could do that. And then I heard that Alpha was starting in my church. So I invited a school friend and he then brought his girlfriend and his mother and another friend, and they loved it. They each encountered Jesus for themselves. And all I did was say, come and see, come and try Alpha. So we can't all be St. Peter or Billy Graham, but we can all be like Andrew or Albert McMakin. We can all invite our friends to come and see. 
Yeah, and I'm not a natural evangelist either. I really don't have all the answers. But I can invite people to come and hear and discuss about Jesus. And that's where Alpha fits in, because Alpha is basically come and see. It's designed for you to bring your friends. And it's not too late for you to invite your friends to the Alpha you're about to help out on. But something which you can all do is pray. As Paul said in the video, there's a challenge for us to pray into someone who we think that we should be speaking to or sharing our faith to or inviting to Alpha. And if you pray that prayer, God will put something and someone thing, someone on your mind. And all you do is pray for that person. The final thing we want to do is to encourage you to pray. Pete Gregg, the founder of 24-7 Prayer, gives some really helpful tips on how you can pray for your guests on Alpha. It's your birthday, you're seven years old, and you get that present that you have been hoping for. Do you remember how that felt? And then you unwrap it and you discover there's no batteries included. It's useless. Such potential rendered powerless. You know, Alpha is exciting, it's amazing, it's life-changing, but only when it's powered by prayer. It's when we pray that God's power shows up through Alpha. He changes lives, miracles happen, guests encounter Jesus, things happen that we simply couldn't engineer humanly. Imagine throwing an amazing party for someone. Delicious food, nice venue, great music, lots of friends, and you go to all that effort and then embarrassingly you forget to invite the honoured guest. It's, it's when we invite God to come on Alpha, we discover that he is even keener to get through the door and get through to those that you've invited than you are. We pray and guests experience the Holy Spirit for themselves. I mean, others get healed, some hear God speaking or they get a breakthrough in their lives when they try praying for themselves. Guests discover that Jesus is real and, and that the kingdom of God is a matter of power, not just words. But let's just release the power of prayer to change lives through Alpha. Get everyone involved, because I might be biased, but I think the most important part of Alpha is prayer. Make sure that your Alpha comes with batteries included. Is that just too cheesy or is that okay? In light of that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the gift of Alpha. We thank you for the people who have spent many, many, many hours and days planning, and revisiting this course to help us as a church reach out to our community. We pray for everyone watching and everyone in our fellowship that you lay on our hearts someone who you want us to talk to or invite to Alpha. And for all those who attend, Lord, we just ask that you open up their hearts to what you have to tell them. And through the discussions and the videos and the chats, Lord, that they can just move on a little bit of their journey of spiritual discovery. And Lord, I just pray for everyone watching today and everyone in fellowship, that through your spirit, you encourage us to share our story. Give us a boldness and the confidence and the braveness to be able just to say those words, I went to church and see where the conversation goes. I just thank you, Lord, that you are a God who loves us and wants everyone to be in a relationship with you. And most of us listening here now have responded and are able to say we are part of your family. And we want that for everyone, our friends, our neighbours, our work colleagues, wherever we find ourselves. So we just pray, Lord, you just help us to be part of that journey. In your precious name, Amen. So I hope you've been encouraged a little bit to share your story and a bit more informed about what Alpha is and what we will be doing. If you have any questions, please get in touch through usual channels, email, phone. And if you're interested, go to the website. There's some information there and there's a sign up page where you can sign up with you and your friend or whoever to come along, be part of Alpha 
and see where this exciting journey might take some of us and some of our friends and family. I hope you had a really good Christmas and have a really good rest for a week before the new year. I don't know what 2021 holds. I hope whatever it is, it means that we can get together in person and be more community. But in our scatteredness, we can still be community where we are, with our friends and our neighbours. And I pray and encourage you to share your faith at every opportunity. We're going to finish by singing two songs. Street.